So this book, incredibly well written. Take me through the writing process for this book. Well, uh, I, I think I've spoken to you before about some of my other yeah. work. I, yeah. This is my fourth novel. Uh, I I, uh, I write about my personal experiences, and before this, I was lucky to spend ten years in China and write about that, and also spend a lot of time in Burma and write about that. So when I went to Bougainville, there's not a lot to do, Jim, in, in Bougainville because uh, we're not on the grid down there. There's, there's no electricity except if you have a generator. So not much to do at night. So uh, it took me two years to write this book and pretty much everything in the novel. I, I, I like the fiction. Uh, you know, I, I, I prefer to write fiction, but everything in the book uh, really happened. Well, it is an amazing read. Uh, what's been the, uh, I guess, reception on the book so far? Well, um, I think you saw in, in some of the uh, blurbs or advanced praise, as the publisher calls it. And it's published, <laughs> by the way, by Post Hill Press, which is a very up-and-coming publisher, as you know here, uh, the advanced praise includes uh, the former Australian ambassador to the United States who, who uh, modestly, he raved about the book. A lot of people in the security industry, and including Captain James Fennell, who was in charge of security for Indo-Pacific in, in uh, Honolulu, uh, talked about the book. So there's, there's been a, a quite a reception, but also... Um, look, this is, you know, nation building has gotten a bad rap lately, but, but at its core, if, if you can really do it, nation building is, is a wonderful thing. And, and that's what we're doing in Bougainville to do nation building. You have to be on the ground. And so I've lived in Bougainville about eight months, nine months out of each year for the last six years. That's pretty awesome. We have got a great guest with us today. John D. Coons is with us. They call me Ishmael, which is a uh, fantastic, fantastic read. And uh, John has uh, published three other novels, including China Fortunes and Ballad of a Tin Man and South of the Clouds, which we've talked to him in the past about. And um, this story that you've written here, um, what, what is some of your goals for this book? Well, let's put it this way. Um, I think we're all aware that, that um, I don't know how to put this. Hollywood is looking for significant roles for African-American or, or black actors and actresses. And, and I applaud that. That's fine. If there was, if there was ever a significant role for a black man, it is to be Ishmael, who is a legendary figure. He, at, at 20 years old, joined the Bougainville Revolutionary Army, moved rapidly up through the ranks, led the Civil War with Papua New Guinea over the gargantuan, fabulously wealthy Panguna Mine, which still, James, holds 100 billion, I didn't say million, 100 billion dollars worth of copper and gold today. Wow. And this man then became the sheriff of the island and ultimately against everything China could do could, to keep him out because China backed not one but two competitors, won the presidency of Bougainville, and he's now going to become the leader of the newest nation on earth. And this is a black man in a black country. There's 300,000 people there. These are proud, very ethical, very moral, very intelligent people, and it's a fantastic story. So my aspirations, James, are that as many people as possible learn about this book and what's going on in Bougainville, and should it be a movie? Absolutely. Everybody should see this. 
Uh, you know, after you've uh, after you've given me, you know, all those stats and all that information, I'm surprised that the United States hasn't invaded that country and stolen all its copper and gold. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, James, that, that's a great point. And look, don't think I haven't been doing everything I can to make people in Washington aware. I mean, James, I brought three Bougainville chiefs, two women and a man, to Washington, D.C., to meet with offices of Vice President Pence, senators like Senator Tom Cotton's office. He's met with us several times. He, he, is, he is one who was informed and, and very interested. But also USAID, the State Department, the old OPEC, which is now Development Finance Corporation. And, and here's the thing I can tell you. It's very difficult to get Washington's attention. Sure, they've got a lot of things they got to pay attention to. But, James, nothing on the globe is more important than paying attention to China. And China is doing in the South Pacific, in Australasia, exactly, exactly what Japan did in the 30s. They're taking over island by island, nation by nation, and one day we're going to wake up and say, uh-oh, that's not so helpful for our free economy, our democracy, and people like us. So that, yeah, I've got to get people to pay attention to this story. Well, it is an uh, amazing, amazing uh, book. So tell us a little bit about where you see um, this book headed? What, 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 what are you hoping people learn from the book? Well, um, you know, there's, there's some important lessons. So on, a, on a benign front, uh, one lesson is that white people and black people uh, can love each other. They can all work together. They can have the same goals and same basic human aspirations, number one. Number two, on a, on a darker level, James, we can't trust China at all. China wants to take over not just where it sits, but the rest of the world. Uh, I worked in China for 10 years before I went to Bougainville, and it's a dark message, but, but people need to learn that. Also, um, it's a very hopeful book because, James, when I went there, I didn't have a clue. I didn't know what I was going to find. The chiefs, the, the, these are the leaders of the landowner groups in Bougainville, invited me to go there five years ago because 20 years earlier, when 15 years earlier, I should say, when they had won the Civil War, they got the right to conduct an independence referendum uh, on the subject of whether they should stay part of Papua New Guinea or become an independent nation. And they lifted their heads up about five years to go uh, and said, look, it's 2015. If we're going to be independent, we've got to get somebody to help us redevelop our economy. They found me. I went over there. And this is a very primitive place, James. I mean, nobody wears shoes. People are reasonably educated because of the great missionary schools that, that were brought in by the colonial powers all the way back 100 and 150 years ago. But it was, it was a daunting task. And I met Ishmael. That's the most important thing that happened to me in Bougainville. And one day he said to me, look, you and I both have a problem. And I said, what's that? He said, the Chinese Communist Party is down here. They're bribing our weak government officials. They're conspiring to take over the presidency. They're, 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 they're behind two strong candidates. I'm not a politician, but unless I run, uh, neither you nor I is going to want to be here. And I said, well, look, you know, Ishmael, I'm really not in the political business. He goes, you really don't have any choice in this, and neither do I. So I went to my investors and my shareholders, and 
we agreed to back him and we managed his campaign. We were the sole contributor to his campaign. I worked with Ishmael over two and a half years. I wrote a lot of his speeches. I developed his economic policies and he won. And now we have a chance to build a new democratic independent nation that's not going to be going around with a hat in hand. Why, James? Because they're sitting on $100 billion yeah. worth of gold and copper, and that's just the Panguna mine. There's all kinds of other resources in Bougainville as well. It's amazing that uh, that this has not become a movie, because this, th- th- this is a hell of a story. Well, just give me some time. <laughs> I'm, I'm working on it, okay? Believe me, I'm working on it. So uh, as we wrap up here with you, my friend, how do we get in touch with you online? How do we um, buy the book, uh, everything else? Okay, well, the, thank you for asking, James. Uh, the book, as I mentioned earlier, is being published by Post Hill Press. Post Hill Press is a very hot, up-and-coming publisher here in the U.S. they published a lot of other people whose names you would recognize, Rudy Giuliani, etc. cetera. Uh, it's being released on January 25th, but people who are interested can pre-order the book now. I would advise them to consider doing that for two reasons. Number one, everybody's read about the supply backlog, and that supply backlog is real. I, I think there's a shortage of paper and so forth. The other reason is, honestly, just to be completely bald-faced about it, the more uh, preliminary purchases I get, the more Post Hill Press will help me to contact people like people in the movie industry about getting this made into a film. So uh, it's a great book. Thank you for saying that, James, but also to your audience. You can, you can contact me at J.D. Coons, K-U-H-N-S, at BougainvilleLLC.com, B-O-U-G-A-I-N-V-I-L-L-E-L-L-C.com. Uh, and tell me if you don't like it, but I, I promise you, you'll like the book. Well, I'll tell you, I, I really think it is uh, going to be quite the book. And the fact that, you know, it, 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 just, it just seems like a movie, my man. That, 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 this could definitely be a huge deal. It, 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 it should be a movie. No question about it. Yeah. Uh, and, and it would be a, a not only thrilling and fascinating movie, but a, a movie that would warm your heart because this, this is a case where, where the good guys are going to win. We're, we're going to build this nation. Uh, Ishmael has got it this far, but he needs American help. They love, James, they love Americans in Bougainville. Why? Because some of your listeners are either themselves uh, members of the armed forces who served in Bougainville in World War II or have relatives who served. A lot of people have heard about the Marines and the Army in, in Bougainville and the Navy, all in Bougainville. And now uh, they, can have, they have a chance to read about finally that place achieving independence and prosperity on its own, but it needs some American help, and they love Americans down there. What they say about Americans is you're the only people, not the Spanish who discovered us, not the French, not the Germans who took us over, <laughs> not the Australians, not the Japanese. You're the only people who came here, did a job, and then left and said, okay, this is your place. You have it back now. Have a nice day. They love Americans. And this is a great story for Americans to read about. Well, if the Americans would have knew they had all that all that treasure down there, I don't know if they would have left so easily. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, that's, that's certainly true. <laughs> <laughs> but we, we can go back and, and, and make some new friends. Well, uh, I'll tell you, it is it is quite the book. I uh, always enjoy chatting with you, my friend. This has definitely been a fantastic conversation. I look forward to more. And uh, what's next for you as an author, my friend? Well, you know, James, I, I, I don't, I really, and my wife hopes that I don't have to go to another far off remote foreign place and, and carve out an existence like I did in, in China and Burma and Bougainville. Uh, I, I think I'm going to stick here, but I think there's a sequel, James. I mean, you know, don't forget there's a hundred billion dollars there. The Chinese are desperate to take it. Uh, the Chinese also covet the strategic location of Bougainville and its deep water ports, which the armed forces use in World War II. So my guess is there's a sequel. Well, it is a great book, and uh, it makes the, uh, the, the the perfect gift, man. I, I, I really appreciate you making time for us today. Thanks for coming on and chatting with us, and uh, we will talk to you soon. Thank you, my friend. James, thank you. Have a wonderful holiday to you and all your listeners, and uh, thanks for listening. Definitely. Take, take care. Talk, Definitely. Talk to you again soon. We will talk to you Bye-bye. soon. Good luck, my friend. There he goes. That's John D. Coons. And uh, we are going to take a timeout. When we come back, we have got more.